July the 1st, 2021. Guys, this is part two of this solar information that I promised I would do for the last few months. And I've got a lot of questions about it. And I can see from just the video yesterday, a lot of you folks are already getting solar panels and batteries. A few other things too. But uh, 3.14 million visits to our website. So thank you guys uh, for all the support. Everything that we you see on our site is either articles or videos or information or products that you can use to uh, help your family survive between food, water, solar power, or whatever. Plus, you really don't need my CD to survive, but it's there too. But anyway, what I want to talk about, it, again, part two of this uh, this particular video. Yesterday, I talked about the panels and how I built the mounts, and I said I would get more into the equipment. That's what I want to do today. And because, uh, guys, the system that you see that I have and the panels, and it took me about three or four years putting this stuff together. You understand? It wasn't just overnight, just because of uh, cash and realizing as I got a gear in and looking at it that I wanted to upgrade from that. And the last thing that I bought was my batteries because that would give them a longer life. One thing about these deep cycle batteries we're going to look at, and we mentioned in the video last night, Unlike a car battery, you can drain it down trying to crank a vehicle and then the alternator will cha charge it back up. But that's a deep, uh, you're really um, taking the battery and depleting it beyond the normal cycle. With these solar batteries, they remain at the upper level of these depletion cycles and that protects and extends the life of the battery. And you've got to have the right equipment to do it, but I've got the equipment and I want to show you what I'm using. But again, thank you for all the years of support and the 3.14 million of you folks that have come here. Now, scroll down on the left of our channel. What, what At the top, that's the video from yesterday, part one of the designing your solar system. And I show you the custom mounts that I designed and built because of the way that I wanted to do mine. And people ask this, and let me uh, go ahead and touch on this subject. From that video yesterday about the panel mounts, a lot of questions about uh, the wind and how that would affect it because I could turn it with my hand. Now, let me say this. We've had tornadoes come very close. We've had some powerful storms where it, to where it was scary, the trees bending over here, and we have a lot of trees. But the panels have never moved. But let me say this. If you're in more a more windy area, then you could put a, uh, either a swing-out ground lock on one of the round pipes that go across that holds four panels or you could put a bolt lock clamp inside the pipe itself just like uh, on the old satellite dishes you could tighten down a three-quarter screw to where it wouldn't turn but so far i've had no problems with that and again we'll get 60 70 mile an hour gust in these thunderstorms here and uh tornadoes uh, very close at some point but anyway to answer that, if you're concerned about it, put a swing out ground lock for those high wind times that you can easily unbolt or either pull a pin and adjust your dish. And I think the key to year round um, power and getting the most out of it is that flexibility that I showed you. You can go up and down or sideways, and each panel can be adjusted differently. But again, when you get them all tuned in like that, you can go out there once or twice a day if you're really needing the backup power and fine-tune that right into the sun, you'll see that it makes a big difference on your power. Again, I used it all through the ice storm. It never uh, ran my batteries down. I had just enough ambient light to keep it at about 75 or 80 percent. It's amazing, but that's what happened. Now scroll down on the left, and I'm going to go through some of the gear. Now, I know it sounds like a big ad, and I guess it is in some ways, but it's the fact that I've been putting off the video on how I built my system. So go here to Aku Power, and this is where I showed you last night. Right now, you can get three, four panels for the price of three, for three fifteen, because I paid like one hundred to one twenty or one fifteen for all twelve of the panels that I have now. But I mean, not only will you get those almost a panel free, but You'll get another thirty-one dollars and fifty cents off because we get you get ten percent by entering this coupon code, and I think it's automatic as you go there. So you're, that will 
uh, you know, pay for something else and you get free shipping. That's another a good thing about it. But click here and we're going to go through some of the other equipment. Clicking that link will bring you here. And I think this is the best deal on the Internet. These are the large uh, panels, just like you saw on my system yesterday. And uh, four for 315 plus your 10 percent discount plus free shipping. And you can set this up for four interest free payments and not a credit check. It's seventy nine dollars a piece. So, you know, you have an option there to spread it out over a couple months. Then you're, what you're going to need is the batteries. And for every four panels, I would use two of these 100-watt batteries that I'm going to show you. Now, I showed you last night. But you're going to need two of those. And you're going to need for every four of these, the way I built my system, is a 30-amp charge controller. And what that does is you're getting the power coming in the panels. And then your charge controller goes in between the panels and the batteries so that your bat batteries don't overcharge and don't get cooked. Once the batteries are full, it shuts it down and um, again protects your batteries it's very good and it's got a couple of other things like a 12 volt output on it and everything like that so I, i'm going to show you those and show you why i use them what you would do is click on shop and come down to controllers and inverters right there click on that now i told you i'm using a redundant system and that means i have for every four panels, which is 400 watts, I've set up a different charger. Now I've got two 30s and a 40. Now I got the 40 on sale, but you're 139. Now, what reason I'm using 30 amps? You may want to make a note, but remember, each panel is 100 watts. It will produce 20 volts at 5 amps, and so this controller will hold six panels, 30 amps, right? Five times six. But by you, I'm using four per one of these at 20 amps. So that gives me about 10 amps hand root. And if uh, one of my three break down, I can transfer two panels over to this 30 amp, which, which would peak it out. That would be six panels at five amps. Or I could, or and put two of the other panels on the down uh, system onto one of the other 30 amp chargers. So that, um, helps a lot because you get up into your 60 amp chargers you're about 260 bucks or so so you're not really saving a lot plus if something happens you don't have this backup but out for every four panels you get get one of these AccuPower 30 amp MPP solar charge controllers that's maximum power point transfer that's the kind you want if you're just a small system or a go kart or something or whatever you know some kind of battery powered a uh, golf cart then you can use some of the smaller ones. But this is what you want in your home. You Again, don't use the 20 amp. They would work, but you have no headroom on your four panel arrays. Click on this. This is going to give you a tremendous amount of information. Notice the pictures in the bottom. Here's your panel. It's probably about five by eight or nine inches wide. You've got uh, mounts here. I've got mine mounted on a wood wall in my uh, shop where I have my batteries and my inverters and stuff. And if you click on this picture, what happens? You've got a set of screws here. These two right there is where your panels hook up. I've tied in four panels into two 10-gauge wires, and they come in here, and I've got it fused. Then notice the battery right there. I don't know if you can see it. Let me bring it up just a little closer. Again, the first two holes, it has a solar panel there. This has, shows a plus and minus sign. Then out to the batteries, a battery sign here with plus and minus terminals, plus a light bulb sign here that you can send 12 volts out of your panels directly without getting into your battery supply. And it gives you uh, full information on how much power is coming in from your panels, how much is going and percentage of your batteries, and uh, the amount of uh, load that is on your 12 volt outlet. All of this can be controlled by a laptop if you need it to be. Now, again, very simple installation. I put uh, fuses on it. I'm going to take a picture of my system, but what you're going to need is this equipment. And uh, the I'll show you in the next video some of the fuses that I have in line. And, uh, again, 10-gauge wire. The way I've set mine up, you can run it, these things, 50 or 60 feet away from your house easily by using this split-up system.
Now go back to your main page, hit shop, and at this time go to your battery section right here. This is the one I was showing you last night. Any good battery that's going to give you a decent amount of uh, time is going to cost you around 200 bucks. These are 12 volt, 100 amp hour rechargeable gel deep cycle 12 volt batteries. Note again, they are um, maintenance free. It's all sealed up here. The, uh, it's, it's very a very nice system. I have six of them. I've had zero problems, absolutely zero problems with them. So, again, you're going to get $22.90 off by using the BP Earth Watch code. So, that's going to put you closer to 200 bucks plus free shipping. And all of this, again, you can put it together on the four interest-free payments. But you're going to need two of these for four panels, uh, for four panels, and you're going to need one of the 30 amp chargers that I just showed you. Then what happens? Your panels come into that charge controller, 30 amp. Then that sends it to your battery bank. Then that's when you step up your wire gauge and you get into your inverter. What you do there, again, come up to shop, come down to controllers and inverters here. Click on that. It'll bring you back to your charge controller page. Scroll down. And you've got, depending on what you're doing, guys, uh, say if you're just in a van, you got one panel or two panels on the top, you may can get away with a 1,500-watt power inverter, 12 volts to 120-volt AC. You've got, let's see, one, two, three, four plugs here, USB outlet for your phones and things like that. But if you're going to run a coffee pot, guys, it's going to take 1,500 watts. Now, they make an inverter that's 3,000 watts, uh, that's 729. This is where you're getting into some of your money. But when you add all of this up, you're less than one of the big Generac generators that can run your home, except these don't need that supply of propane. Guys, that can or natural gas that can become very hard to find in a bug out situation. Now, the um, again, 3000 watts, and that is a pure sine wave inverter. That's what you want. Click on this. Now, it says 3,000 watts. That's your standard power, but it has a 6,000-watt peak, and that is to kick on your refrigerator or your deep freeze compressor or, your say, your window unit 5,000 BTU air conditioner, which is a good idea compared to a large uh, central air and heat unit because usually they're 240 and require a lot more power and a couple you can get a 5000 BTU window unit for about 100 bucks now just think about that but again the 6000 watt peak on this thing uh, gives you that power to use the compressors they cut on and they cut back off not only that it's a pure sine wave inverter that means it's a replication of AC it, you've got an inverter that's not it's a simulated sine wave and it's really not good for your electronics, your laptops, phones, and tablets, things like that, computers. The pure sine wave gives you much cleaner energy. So, again, you, you add this stuff up, you know, you're going to get into three or four grand before it's all over with, but you're going to have something there that, re again, $2,000 less or 3000 than some of the genera um, generators that require propane. This is putting you and the sun in charge. Now, if you're going to build the mounts like I showed you in the video yesterday, go ahead and get you a 500-foot roll of 10-gauge wire at Home Depot because you're going to use quite a bit of it, but it's going to save you money from having to buy more expensive solar cable because I buried mine underground in conduit. Remember that? And 10-gauge is all you need to run uh, these systems the way I've got it set up. Again, 20 amps coming out of each four-panel array. Now, just, um, and that'll be in the next video. You're fusing, you're wiring, and I'm going to put up a, di a wiring diagram in a video of exactly how I did mine. And there's other uh, diagrams that I can show you that are already available. But uh, there, just let me show you a couple other things that they've got. It depends on what you're going to need. If you're going to be mobile or um, you want to have, um, make sure you got plenty of refrigeration, and it's great if you've got insulin problems or medicine that has to be medicated or, or whatever it is. But they do have a solar cooler. If you're not familiar with it, I just want to show you that. Again, go back up to shop here. Notice the top solar freezers called the Lion Cooler because you're dealing with ion batteries. 
This which is what makes it really neat. And they have them in six, uh, 32 or 16, 32, 42, and 52 quart uh, sizes. And it can drop down to a minus four degrees Fahrenheit, which is plenty enough for what you're going to be doing. And this is what, again, they're expensive and um, just the different options. You get a 40 or 42 quart solid fridge freezer here for $4.99. Now that will hold quite a bit. And there's some of the kits that you see over here that are more expensive that have these folding panels. Guys, the folding panels are convenient, but they're much more expensive. If you're in a van or something or a camper, mount the rigid panels on top or if you're at your home. But if, now if you got a really super bug out, the folding panels are going to cost you two or three times more. They're not as efficient, but they are more portable. But I, I would use the hard panels as much as I can. And you also see these flexible solar panels. Don't use them. The ends crack. They lose power. They're just not rigid enough to sustain the stability that that sheet of silicon needs that's uh, inside these uh, panels, guys. So avoid the flexible panels. The You're going to pay a lot more for these fold-outs. But if you're in a situation where room is critical, they're a lot better than nothing. You may need it. But again, you can... The, this is a 40 amp, this is a 40 amp, notice the price difference. One is with the panels, and this particular, four, this is an R40A, and you take this top off and you can replace the battery. Now the X40A has a push-in battery to where you can buy an optional battery and just slip them out in and out and, and uh, charge one while you do the other one. Um, and so that that's the big in, difference in it and the panels. Now, if you look very closely, sometimes you can get a deal on these uh, particular freezers. Here's a 40 amp, and I guess somebody sent it back in. They went back, refurbished it, whatever. You've seen it on even power tools for 389 42 quart. You know, it, it's not a bad price at all on that. You still get your full warranty. But if you need or you're concerned about medicine or just for the convenience of being in your truck, or in your car on a trip, then this is a pretty good price. It's less than a Yeti. You can charge it from your cigarette lighter. You can charge it from your wall plug, or it has a solar panel plug in it. I think that's the only cooler that does that. So really, that's really nice. It's just something else you can add and something else to think about as you prepare to come off a grid system that is failing very fast for multiple reasons. But this is an update on the equipment you're going to need. Again, not the exact fusing and things, but that will be in the next one, and you'll have time to get them, and you can get those locally if you need them. But uh, watch for an update on the tropics and the Atlantic coming up shortly after this video loads. The storms this morning on that video were trying to move to the east coast of Florida, out and in, back into the Atlantic. Everything's changed now that's moving into the Gulf of Mexico. It's moving west, but I'll have that in the next update. Guys, I'm sorry to... It sounds like a long infomercial. I know it was, but it was the only way I could answer the questions about what you need. I appreciate it. It's a heads up. Be safe.